Last year, at around this time, I reported on the return to MMO game development of Raf Costa with his company Playable Worlds. This is good news for Star Wars Galaxies fans and fans of sandbox gaming in general. A lot has happened since then though, so it's high time for an update. Playable Worlds is now more than a name, it also has a website which showcases an impressive roster of MMO veterans who are presumably beavering away at creating the foundations of the company's first release. The website also offers tantalising soundbites about the company's focus and the nature of the game Costa and Co are working on. But first, the big news recently is that Playable Worlds has secured another 10 million in venture capital funding from Galaxy Interactive, an investment firm that believes we are at a critical inflection point in the development of interactive content and technology. It all sounds very futuristic. It's the future. What it actually means is unclear, but the firm seems to be looking to back people they see as being at the cutting edge of online trends. Costa and his team are apparently some of those people, and the press release from Playable Worlds uses several buzzwords such as cloud native content and blockchain as evidence of their technological futurism. According to my research, now bear with me, Cloud native refers to applications that leverage cloud computing through development and post launch. It's all about the way things are created and deployed. Speed, flexibility, consistency seem to be important considerations for companies using a cloud native infrastructure. This is from PW's press release. Playable Worlds is developing cloud technology that delivers richer simulations, more regular content releases, and stronger communities. Exactly how a cloud-based infrastructure helps with that end goal may be a question that is on your mind, it's certainly on my mind. But before I get ahead of myself, what is blockchain? Well, most people know the word from Bitcoin. It's a way of recording and distributing data, transactional data in the case of Bitcoin. But in relation to the development of an online world, one could perhaps see how such a technology might be useful. Maybe, honestly, a lot of this stuff goes way over my head. But let's boil it down to its essence. Playable Worlds is using new technologies, cloud-based technologies, in the development of its first original IP, and this fact is a key selling point for the company and its product. How much of this is due to the fact that the current focus is on building foundational technology and attracting funding, that's hard to say. Will all this cutting edge architecture be readily apparent to the end user, the gamer, in the scope or flexibility of the game they might play? They mentioned the word simulation, you know, that's important. Could cloud-based infrastructure lead to a more complex simulation than ever before? Only time will tell, I guess. Current forays into cloud-based gaming from Google have left gamers lukewarm, however. Its flagship platform Stadia serves up games that already exist with an extra helping of lag, and it's currently languishing far behind the major players like Microsoft and Sony. It's not a fair comparison. Playable World's focus is quite different to that of Stadia, but I think when considering new technologies and blue sky claims about the future, it's worth returning to Earth occasionally for some context. And thankfully, the Playable Worlds website does add quite a bit of that now. The most concrete information being the people working on the game. As mentioned previously, many are industry veterans, but a few names stand out. Lead designer Greg Kostikian started out creating roleplay games for West End games, most notably for Star Wars Galaxies fans, the Star Wars role-playing game. His career has straddled both pen and paper RPGs and video games for decades. I'm not sure why this uh, fills me with such hope, but it does. The appointment of a lead designer who understands the fundamentals of the role-playing genre and has spent his career developing compelling worlds for players not only means Playable World's first game is in good hands, but it also says something about the nature of the game, right? I was an early follower of Raf Costa's Metaplace when it was in development. I even took part in an implementation of the chat system before it was fleshed out. We floated around in space against a backdrop of a football pitch, I seem to remember, and chatted to the devs as clouds of JPEGs. But Metaplace turned out to be more of a system for creating games than a game itself. Interesting and forward thinking for the time, but it wasn't really what I was looking for as a gamer. My fear, which is too strong a word, but I've used it, so I'm going to keep going, for Playable Worlds was that its first IP might be another of these costastic experiments. Can we coin that, coin that term? Costastic. It's a Raf Costa experiment. The appointment of Greg Kostikian, known as Designer X in his early career, what do they still call him that now, seems to indicate to me that Playable World's game will be an actual game and a proper RPG. That's my hope anyway. 
Lead character artist Steve Moore is another name that jumped out to me. Not because I knew who he was before I read the blurb, but because of the games mentioned in that blurb. I've since done some research and he has an impressive resume, but Telltale's The Walking Dead and Ratchet and & Clank. Obviously, I'm a layman gamer looking for clues about what a game from these people might look like, and I'm not sure how much influence the lead character artist has on the overall style of a game, but lead is in the title, right? And both the aforementioned games trumpet a certain cartoony style. Might this be a direction Playable Worlds is going in? It would certainly make sense given the popularity of things like World of Warcraft and more recently Fortnite. A cartoony stylized game isn't to everyone's taste, but it brings in the crowds and it generally means the game can run on a potato. I'm sure I'm being far too presumptuous, but if there is one concrete takeaway from Playable World's current team page, it's that there is now a talented team in place, and there wasn't 12 months ago. Other than that, there are certain things that can be inferred from the company's mission statement. Our goal is an online community made up of many different playstyles coming together in a rich world, a world full of great gameplay that is fun for all sorts of people. This is something Raf Costa has spoken about many times in his lectures and interviews that online games should be inclusive of many kinds of gamer. You can only create a truly immersive simulated world with many different kinds of people doing lots of different kinds of things. The next statement is particularly interesting for followers of this channel. A new universe, we're creating a whole new original setting with room for role players, warring factions, homesteaders and intrepid explorers. Sound like any game you're familiar with? We should be very wary of hoping for anything like Star Wars Galaxies 2 or Ultima The Next Generation, but these elements are core aspects of both Costa's most successful games, and if nothing else, it seems like they will be just as important in the new one. So what have we learned? Well, I feel like I've learned quite a lot, actually. We don't know anything about gameplay, setting, or storyline, but there's increasingly reason to get excited about what Playable Worlds is up to. This is going to sound terrible, uh, rather disparaging, but this actually sounds like a proper game. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I got burnt on Metaplace, but I don't think that was really the developer's fault or anything like that. I was just expecting the wrong thing. And when it became apparent it wasn't the next big MMO I was looking for, I should have realized that earlier. With Playable Worlds, I've been very cautious as a result until it becomes clear exactly what is being offered. And now I feel like I'm getting a, a real sense of that and I'm getting excited. Also, a game that is getting a lot of its backing from venture capital rather than crowdfunding fills me with a, a bit more confidence these days. The shine has gone off crowdfunding for me. It's a development model that has led to some fairly underwhelming games from my point of view or, or games that are languishing in development hell. Am I the only one who craves a simpler time when game creators created a game, showed you the end result, and only asked you to pay for it at that point? I wouldn't be surprised if some crowdfunding emerged as part of what Playable Worlds is doing, but the initial focus on keeping the development under wraps and funded through venture capital gives me confidence for some reason. Anyway, I intend to keep informed about what is going on at Playable Worlds because I think it's very relevant for followers of this channel. I hope you enjoyed this roundup. I am now going to upload this report to a cloud native video hosting site where there's probably a blockchain recording the transaction and everyone can watch together in a metaverse of dreams. Bloody Raf Costa. I also want to thank Bree Royce at Massively OP for the use of the Ultima footage in the background since I didn't have any of that available. Check out Massively OP for the latest MMO gaming news and check out some of my other videos. There are some coming up here for your perusal and I will see you next time.